Hey guys, Doug from Pine Tree Line Outdoors. I'm here about 25 kilometers south of Sudbury, uh, and I'm here to discover the Long Lake Gold Mine. Uh, I'm here with a buddy of mine, a little shy, uh, Chris K from Chris K Productions. Does a lot of uh, video work, he does uh, my drone stuff for me. Great guy. Um, he's familiar with the mine a little bit more than I am, so he's my tour guide for today. Um, the mine was discovered in 1906. Um, and it's been called the Long Lake Gold Mine. It's um, changed hands a couple times, but it's produced over uh, 1,300 ounces of gold in 1910, actually. Apparently, there's not much left. Uh, tailings, uh, the, uh, the glory hole, which is uh, filled with water now, is uh, supposed to be down there, uh, down that way. So, we're on our way to uh, see if we can discover it and uh, see what's left. All right, guys, uh, just our luck here. We've uh, hit this area, and it is a river. And it's muddy, and it's slippery. And I'm trying hard not to fall in. But just to give you a perspective how it looks, Water coming from there, flowing down pretty good. Over down into this area, and it doesn't look like there's an area to cross. Because if there was, trust me, we'd be crossing. Just continues to flow down there. We'll be back with an update. All right, we're uh, Chris is going to fly the drone and uh, see if we can find a way to get past. Chris is attempting to bushwhack a little bit in there to see if there's any hope at all. It looks like around this bend it, it gets a little bit tighter, but I don't have very much faith. I basically uh, gave him the green light. If he wanted to go, he could go, but I wasn't going.
All right, guys, here's the situation. That across there is the road. And this is what stands between us and the road to the gold mine. And, you know, as I've shown you, uh, this is, you know, become more than a creek even. It's a river. There must be a broken beaver dam uh, further up that way. That's allowing all this water, from what Chris tells me, it's never been never been like this at all so what we're going to attempt to do is uh chris is going to try to uh well he's not going to try to he's going to fly the drone over so we can get a look at the gold mine an overview unfortunately he can't bring you there hands on i'm disappointed he's disappointed really want to see it explain a little bit more about uh about the mine and how they used arsenic to uh refine the gold and how it killed the area around you're going to see that in the video how uh how nothing's been able to grow there since and of course that would arsenic would never be used uh, ever again in terms of it's an environmental uh, hazard as you'll see from the footage all right we're gonna give that a uh, shot with the drone Chris is gonna fly that sucker uh, right over the gold mine here we go There it is. I think it's lightning quick. There it goes. Let's see what it gets. Give you guys a little more information about the Long Lake Gold Mine. As I mentioned earlier, the, the mine's located about 25 kilometers southwest of Sudbury. Uh, it's located at the end of Long Lake and Tilton Lake Road. There are two trails to get there. Uh, from the north is the way we took in the video. Uh, which ended up being a uh, an epic fail, unfortunately. And normally that's the best way of getting there. The second way to get there is via a hiking trail from the east, which is unmaintained. And that is the area that we are looking to use, or the trail we're looking to use in the near future as we plan to go back and, uh, and see the area uh, by the ground. Uh, there's also three discolored barren tailing areas that contain high levels of arsenic and you're looking at the biggest one right now. There are also ruins and old structures lining the tailings, the tailing areas. There's also a glory hole that contains many branching mine shafts that reach a depth of 120 meters. The hole is full of water and that water contains potentially dangerous levels of toxic chemicals including arsenic right to this very day, over a hundred years later. A little history, the mine was discovered in 1907, but changed ownership until 1909, at which point the Canadian Exploration Company, the CEC, purchased the property and began operations. The CEC mined and smelted gold from the area until 1916. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, in 1910, the mine produced over 1,300 ounces of gold and was the largest gold producer in Ontario. During the Depression, the Labelle Oro Company developed more underground shafts and caverns and continued mining and smelting and milling. The main ore body was 50 meters by 80 meters and continued to a depth of 100 meters. The environmental impact has basically mostly been caused by arsenic. The three tailing areas which scar the landscape contain dangerous levels of arsenic, which leach into surrounding areas including the waters of the southwest portion of Long Lake, where the arsenic levels exceed Ontario's drinking water standards. Arsenic dust is produced from smelting. Arsenic is usually contained in ore bodies and naturally it gets released as sulfide minerals erode. Mining released large quantities of arsenic into the environment, both into the atmosphere and large quantities reside in the waste product which is those tailings. As time passes, arsenic from mining waste spreads throughout natural water sources. Due to how damaging mining operations can be to the environment, strict regulations are put on mining companies to produce safe, clean, environmentally conscious mining. Resources from mining companies are being spent on pollution control technology and environmental protection agencies conduct regular expectations 
to ensure safe mining practices. Environmental release of arsenic dropped 79% between 1993 and 2009 and continues to improve. Had these regulations been in place in 1909, the massive environmental footprint from the Long Lake gold mine could have been dramatically reduced. A number of new technologies are being used to capture and remove arsenic from smelting stacks and mine tailings. Air pollution can be controlled effectively using scrubbers, electrostatic participators, and bag houses and smelters which are capable of removing 99.7% of the dust and fumes produced during roasting and smelting. Mine tailings and wastewater can be treated with iron compounds which rea react with arsenic and remove it from the water. Arsenic can be filtered from waste and tailings with iron oxides, clay liners and activated charcoal filters which can be disposed of safely. The use of plants, wetlands and other iron nanoparticles to remove arsenic from already contained areas is also being studied. We certainly have learned a lot from our past mistakes and thankfully we care enough to ensure mining operations are done more responsibly. The damage to the environment in Long Lake has persisted for over 100 years and shows no sign of recovery without our intervention. The Ministry of Northern Development and Mines has put in place a plan to recover the environment at the mine. The ministry plans to relocate all the tailings to one area and seal them off. Afterwards, the area will be reforested. drone is the star of this video. We certainly didn't do much to help.